What's going on guys? Today we are going to be installing a tow hitch, the factory Land Rover tow hitch on a 2021 Range Rover uh, full size. So I've scoured the internet and I cannot find a complete video showing how to do this. Uh, I did find like a partial video where they do like maybe the first half of it, but the video just cuts off. Um, so anyway, I'm going to make this video and it will forever live on YouTube if anybody else decides to add a factory hitch to the Range Rover after the fact. So let me show you what we've got. The uh, tow bar is this guy right here and it is massive and very heavy. It also comes with this bracket and the hardware in the bag there. Now another couple of pieces you'll need to buy are these two trim pieces and those are separate. Um, I am not installing the electronics on this as I don't plan to actually tow anything. This is going to be just to use a hitch rack because uh, there's not a lot of room in the rover if you're going on a trip with four people, not for luggage and stuff. So that is what we and the neighbor's dog will be working on today. Um, as far as instructions in the box, all you get is this. So we're going to take this sheet, scan our QR code, open Land Rover in Safari, and we're going to come to this page. Uh, we'll just hit this button up in the corner. English. Okay, click Land Rover Range, and let's find the Range Rover. Oh, there it is. All right, now we're going to select Towing. And we are looking for the tow bar. Uh, the North American version, that's going to be right here. Tow bar NAS slash AUS. And these are our instructions. Now I have printed these out. Um, which will be a lot easier to look at than opening my phone every time I need to look back on something. As you can see, these aren't, there's not really any uh, instructions, it's just pictures. So, it, it does look like there are torque specs, so that's good. Our first order of business is going to be to remove this panel here. And there's just some little tabs here. These you just twist one direction, they should pop out. Yeah, like this one here. Next step, we're going to remove this panel, and there's going to be a four bolts, one, two, three, four, and uh, those are all T25 Torx head, so let's, I'm going to hit those with my Milwaukee Power Ratchet. We actually got a couple more bolts right here and here, and those are our 10 millimeter. Now, 
tools free. And here I'll show you the difference between the panel I just pulled off, which is that one, versus this one, which obviously you have the room for the hitch and the, uh, the uh, con uh, controller uh, module to stick out. Next, we're going to remove these two bolts right here. These are 10 millimeter. I'm not sure if we're keeping that piece on yet or not, so I will get back to you. Just leave that in place for now. All right, now we're gonna remove the bumper. Uh, first step, we're gonna take a trim panel tool and we're gonna remove this little trim piece right here to access the bolts here. So we're gonna start at this end and just carefully work our way in here. And this will start to pull out. We're just going to keep working our way around. And we're probably going to need to open the tailgate. So let me go ahead and do that. Yep, there we go. This will give us enough room to, because uh, this piece has a tab that wraps around. That'll help us get that out. Just gonna carefully keep pulling around. There we go. And despite what it sounded like, I managed to get that off without breaking any clips. Always uh, terrifying, <laughs> terrifying sounding. So we're gonna set that aside. And as you can see, we have a, uh, I believe that's a T30 Torx bolt right there that we're gonna be getting. But uh, let's move on to the other side. All right, we're gonna do the same thing over here. tabs. With those little trim pieces removed, we can go ahead and start taking these bolts out. This is a Torx T30. It's a little short stubby bolt. And we'll grab the one on the driver's side as well. Now we'll grab these 10 millimeter bolts at the back here. Next, we're gonna move into the uh, fender well here, and we're at the back of the passenger side. Um, there's gonna be some bolts holding the rear bumper onto the fender. These are all Phillips head. So we're gonna set you on the tripod and get those out. And obviously this, it'll aid you to raise the uh, Range Rover up into its extended height position to make getting to these easier. With our fender bolts removed, we're gonna go underneath and you'll find a Torx T25 on either side. So we're gonna hit that with the ratchet.
This may differ depending on uh, what year your Range Rover is, but at least for the 2018 up, uh, we are going to undo this little bolt here on either side of the exhaust. It is a Torx T25. So the last three bolts we need to remove are actually just little pop rivets, and they're going to be hidden under the hatch flap. So I'm going to set the camera down here and just prop this open with this socket extension. And I'll show you those a little closer. We have one, two, three, and we'll just pull up on those little uh, tabs and then we will be able to remove the whole pop with it. So I'm going to use the, the little trim tool. And some extra light never hurt. All right. And we can go ahead and fold this flap back down and we're actually going to fold the tailgate up out of the way we also want to make sure we disconnect the parking sensors from right here as this is going to come off with the bumper to do that you're simply going to squeeze on this piece right here And you can see that tab moves, and then we can pull on our cord. With all of the bolts removed, we can now uh, remove the rear bumper. I am going to pull on one side. Right here, pop this free, pull on the other side, and then we'll remove it from the middle. Now, as you can see over there, I have some towels set aside to, uh, as a place to place the bumper so we're not scratching it. All right, with our bumper removed, our next step is going to be to get rid of this rear cross member so we can replace it with a tow bar. Um, I'm gonna first get rid of this uh, harness that's clipped onto it here, here, and two the same way on the other side. Should just be able to take a flat head and pop those off. To actually remove the cross member, we're going to have five bolts on each side. These are 13 millimeter, and you will need an extension for this one hiding in there, and an impact, preferably. Same situation on the passenger side. Quite conveniently, they actually have this uh, piece of steel protruding to hold this up so that we just have to lift this off. Uh, first, we do need to remove these side pieces, though, because those are going to prevent it from coming off. These are 10 millimeters each. And 
And removing those gives us just enough room to pull this little bracket out and set it aside. Now we should be able to lift this cross member off. If you recall this piece from earlier, we are going to remove this and discard it. We're also gonna pop these connectors out as they are gonna be relocated onto the uh, actual tow bar. And it definitely helps if you have a little tool like this. But a screwdriver, flathead will work just fine. And for now, if we can try to tuck these up out of the way. I'm also going to pop this little rivet out and move this out of the way as to not get tangled up while we're trying to hang the cross member or the tow bar. And I'll do the same on the other side. And we'll probably just zip, to, zip tie those out of the way. Alternatively, you could just remove it and uh, reattach it once the uh, cross, the uh, tow bar is installed. With everything mostly out of the way, I'm gonna bring the, the new tow bar and hang it on the pegs. So if your tow bar is anything like mine, it might be fighting you a little bit, uh, trying to get it on flush. Um, you put it on flush one side, it comes off the other side. So I got it pretty even now, and I'm just going to draw it in with the bolts. And they give you uh, new bolts to replace your, the ones that were on there, and they already have some red Loctite on there. So we're going to just, uh, I'm not going to torque these down yet, but I'm going to try to draw it in and get that uh, tow bar flush. And for what it's worth, you may want to uh, remove these little dangly bits because they will kind of get in the way while you're trying to hang this thing. It's not imperative. If you can get it hung up, uh, the tow bar will kind of drop behind them. But uh, being by myself here, I was having a little issues with it. So I just went ahead and removed them. But then once we have these in most of the way, we can go ahead and reinstall these. With the hitch bar bolted up, uh, now I'm going to show you where we relocate all these to. So you'll notice they have a skinny uh, little pop rivet thing and then a, a thicker one. And where those pulled out right here, they're going to relocate right here in front of it on this little raised rail. And you'll just pop those guys in there like this. Just like so. I did get a wee bit carried away, so I'm gonna have to remove these two uh, bolts here and put this bracket back on top of it uh, to connect back to this piece. So I'm gonna pop these back out. So I'm going to go ahead and torque down all these 13 millimeter bolts. The directions call for 70 newton meters plus 60 degrees. I've never in my life heard of torque plus 
any amount of degrees. So I have looked it up and I found an awesome video by Robert DIY on YouTube explaining just what in the world that is. And so I don't have an angle torque meter and so I'm going to use the little cheat he suggested or, or, or explained in his video. I'm not going to explain it here. I'm just going to go ahead and torque these down to 70 newton meters and then I will put that 60 degrees of angle torque on them. All right, to make life a little easier on you guys, I am going to quickly explain how I put 60 degrees of angle torque on here. Uh, like I said, you need to watch his video, which I will link in the description. It's Robert DIY, and he'll explain what exactly is happening here. But essentially, we, oh, I, I tightened all these down to 70 newton meters. Um, well, I have a, a torque wrench in foot pounds, so it was actually 51.8 six something eh, close enough and so what we do is once we're all tightened down we put our socket on and then you make a mark on the socket and the bolt you're tightening and so those we want those to line up and now what we're going to do is turn you see that is a six-sided bolt and a six-sided socket we're going to after we make our marks, we're going to turn this 60 degrees counterclockwise, and then we're going to use a breaker bar or torque wrench or whatever uh, to turn this socket so that that first line on here matches up with our line here. So, um, I mean, you wouldn't be taking this off, but it would essentially turn till we get to right there and that is putting 60 degrees of angle torque on that bolt and i have already done that to all 10 of the bolts you see all the little marks on them and uh that's just the quick and dirty of how to do it on this particular job um like i said definitely check out his video it's super informative super informative and it's something i'd never heard of so pretty cool and now that we have all 10 of those 13 millimeter bolts torque down to 70 newton meters plus 60 degrees we are going to go ahead and clip this thing back in place and you'll notice that this tow bar conveniently has holes for all these little clips that we pulled out so we can just stuff those in there and it's the same story on this side we can just I guess we could pro I guess it would probably actually make more sense to stuff them under. So I reckon I'll go back and redo those other ones. But now we got all those tidied up. And I will guys so now we have come to these three pieces the instructions are absolute garbage at explaining how to attach these pieces to your Range Rover utter garbage uh, I've been looking at it for like I don't know an hour trying to figure it out but I'm crawling under here and just uh, experimenting finally got it figured out and it makes so much sense now so this piece, you're going to have it oriented just like this under the car or at the back. Now, these, uh, uh, these pieces right here, they're going to be oriented like this. One of these is labeled C, one is D. I don't remember which. doesn't matter. This is B. What matters is that you orient them just like I have right now. So this long piece, the uh, open end is going to be at the back. For these, I'm going to show you where these go. So we're going to install these guys first, and then we have to wiggle this into place, and it's got to go around that exhaust valve you see right there. Um, but I'll, I'll get to that point in a moment. 
if you have the plug-in hybrid version of the Range Rover, you're on your own. They pretty much tell you to remove the exhaust to uh, fit this thing up in there. And <laughs> yeah, I'm not trying to remove the exhaust. But I have the mild hybrid, so we don't have to worry about that. So let me show you where these pieces go. On the driver's side, we have, well, you'll see you have each of these rails coming out on either end. On the driver's side is where we're going to start. Um, you'll notice once you have this in place, you have this hole up here. And then this bolt hole here. So what we're going to do is take this. And we're gonna take one of these bolts. You have 10 of these, these are an M12. They are fatter than the bolts you used, the 10 you used on the uh, actual hitch to the frame there. So that's how you'll know these apart. And what you're gonna do is you're going to take this piece, this is the driver's side piece, and it is gonna go, let's see if I can get this on camera good. here such that you kind of have to stick it in between the heat shield here and it's going to go in there just like that and so we are going to put a bolt through that hole i just wiggled my finger through into here and then you'll have another bolt that we'll put in later up through there Peel the heat shield away just enough to get that in there. Slide this M12 bolt through here and into our hole here. And this is a 15 millimeter bolt head. We're not going to torque that down quite yet. We'll get to that. And now we're going to do the other side. Hopefully you can get an idea of what I'm doing here. I will take the camera and show you up close in a second. All right. Let's give you another look here. You see that kind of fits up in there under that heat shield. And now this bottom hole has a, a threaded hole that's in the bottom of the vehicle. And there's that bolt I just put in through there. And now I'm gonna show you on the driver's side. Same thing, but opposite. There's that bracket, our bolt, and you have these two holes, and this one is threaded into the car, and then this top one has a welded nut. Now, that is going to line up with these two right here, as is these two to right here. And there's going to be some more bolts that go up here, as well as uh, snaking that little tab into a hole up there, which I will show you momentarily. All right, we are laying under the back of the Range Rover, <clears throat> and we are going to install this part now. Since we have these brackets installed, we are going to route this up into play. Um, so... First, I'm going to crawl under here and give you an idea of where this is going to go. 
first of all, I want you to think about this tab right here. I'm gonna show you where that's gonna go. So we have rolled pretty much underneath here and I do have this in extended height. Um, these bolt holes or these threaded holes are what you're gonna use uh, to run bolts through that bracket. But that little tab I showed you is gonna fit up in here just to kind of locate it. Now, the hard part of routing this thing is getting it around this exhaust valve. So uh, you have to get kind of creative and uh, um, I'll try to show you. I'll set the camera on a tripod and try to show you how I'm going to do it. Uh, this would be a lot easier with a lift. So doing the best I can here. So let me put the camera on a tripod and I'll show you how I'm going to route that in here. under here and you'll see how that tab is located into that hole then we're going to take our m12 by 50 bolts and run them through here and through here and through here too and there might be four uh, yep there's gonna be four So for these four bolts, you're just gonna have to do your best, the best you can to get under here and uh, tighten these up. Not a ton of room to get an impact, but this seems to work. Before I start torquing uh, those bolts back there down, I'm gonna start um, threading in the bolts that go on these brackets here, under here, here, sorry, I'm not showing you, am I? Uh, up and through here, those guys, these guys, let's go ahead and get those started. We now have all of our bolts in, as you can see. And so we are going to torque all of these down to 80 newton meters plus 90 degrees angle torque. Um, so the 80 newton meters is going to be equivalent to about 59 foot pounds. So I'm going to go ahead and start getting all of those torqued down. Not going to film this because it's not going to be particularly interesting or difficult to understand. So I've got every bolt torqued down. Um, all the ones underneath are torqued to 80 newton meters plus 90 degrees angle torque. And we are ready to put the bumper back on. We are almost home. That's important. 
fortunate. It's magic. All right, before I start buttoning all that down, let me go ahead and plug our parking sensors back in into their new location. And we can start installing stuff just in the reverse order that we took it off with the bumper. not good at remembering where things go be sure and label all of your parts I'm pretty good at remembering so I didn't bother what I'm not as good at is keeping up with my tools Now we're uh, reinstalling our trim panels on the sides. To do this, we're going to do it exactly how we took it off. We're gonna uh, very carefully loop it in here, uh, get it seated on this edge, and then wrap it around. And if you look inside here, you can actually see a little uh, rectangular slot that this cutout's gonna slide into. Um, I'll actually just show you that make life easier for you. Uh, there we go. You see what we're doing here? There we go. Repeat that same procedure on the driver's side. Last two pieces of the puzzle. We're gonna take our new bottom plate and we're going to reinstall it using our OEM hardware that we took off earlier.
and then we're gonna hit these bolts right here. No, bolts, screws, whatever you call them. And these are our T25s. You know what, let's be lazy. Always remember to use your safety squint. And last but not least, to top everything off, make sure you can see this. That's it, folks. We have a trailer hitch. So the plan is to get a swing out uh, cargo rack so that we can open the tailgate and uh, go on road trips. Real excited to test this thing out. Um, this spot over here is where the uh, electronics controller would go, you know, the little plug. Um, but like I mentioned earlier, not planning on installing that unless I'm actually end up trailering something which i doubt we will but you never know always have the option quite the uh quite the install hopefully this helps somebody else um like i said the directions were just awful um kind of had to piece it together as i went so hopefully this video will definitely uh you know reach some people who are looking to do this and make things a little easier if you have any questions at all, definitely leave them in the comments. I'll be happy to get back to you. And uh, thanks for watching. Have a good one.